Hey, good morning, everybody. I'm horticulturist Gary Bachman, and thanks for joining me for the first Ask Me Anything of 2022. We took a couple of months off, and that's okay. Needed to recharge, you know, there's other things going on. But now we've had a couple of great weeks, a couple of chilly weekends these past couple of weekends, but beautiful one coming up this, this week. And let's get out and garden with, with some good advice here. Um, things I wanted to talk about, and of course, always want to, you know, talk about your questions that you're having in, in the yard and garden, but just wanted to show you something that I really think is neat. Last year, I became obsessed, which is really kind of funny, me being obsessed with a tomato plant, since I don't like fresh tomatoes. Well, I became obsessed with the micro tomatoes, you know, the, the little the little dwarf varieties. And I grew 10 of them last year. And if you watched our daily doses here, I'm, the camera's backwards. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to get, the, get this right. Um, last year, if you're f watching the daily doses, I was showing you, I grew 10 varieties of micro tomatoes. This one happens to be, what is this? Birdie Rouge, which was kind of a real pale pink tomato. These, um, these micro tomatoes don't grow, well, they don't grow full-size tomatoes, but they grow full-size cherry tomatoes. And I was, I was really impressed with them. This plant, you can see, it's, so careful I don't drip on my laptop here. It's already flowering. I seeded the, um, all the micros on January 1st, my traditional first tomato seeding date of the year. And they've been growing inside. Now, I've got three flats of these growing under grow lights, and they look like they're doing like they're doing pretty good. Um, tell you this weekend, I will be putting these out in the garden. I'll have to give them a little bit of sun protection so so they don't so they don't um, you know get scald on them and and, and get um, stressed that way. But you know it's it's a time to get let's get out in the garden. There's other tomatoes I'm gonna I'm going to um, plant now. I'm not going to plant peppers yet because peppers I have found in my garden and let's let's face it, gardening is all about experimentation with um, you know with the different plants and timings. Well, I learned in my um, coastal garden that peppers really like to be planted not April first when all the planting guidelines say, but May 1st. And I did a little experiment several years ago where I planted a group of peppers April 1st with the tomatoes. And then I planted the same peppers May 1st. And you want to know what happened? Both sets of peppers produce fruit at the same time. So those early peppers that you get in the ground, they just kind of sit there because they want that soil to be warmer than the tomatoes do. And I really like it because that takes a lot of pressure off of me of having peppers ready along with tomatoes. So just last night, I went ahead and I started sowing my pepper seeds. And I may be going a little bit overboard, but I've seeded 63 different varieties. And they're not all just bell peppers. I've gotten kind of interested in kind of obscure peppers. I'm growing a bunch from Eastern Europe that kind of evolved or were selected in, in that area. I'm growing a bunch of land race peppers from the Southwest, um, American Southwest down into Mexico. And these land race peppers are, are, you can kind of think of them as heirlooms where they've developed in a very specific region by maybe a family. And they have kept these seeds, collecting the seeds and, and, and growing these year after year after year, generation after generation. So it'll, it'll be kind of interesting. I'm growing these peppers that kind of evolved in the hot and dry Southwest here on the hot and humid uh, Mississippi Gulf Coast. Okay, we looks like we have... I don't know, Ellen, there, there was a comment there that they couldn't log in. I don't know if that's 
if that's something that that you can fix on your end but i'm i'm just going to i'm just going to keep right on rolling here maybe maybe they'll be able to to um hook in now okay we've got some questions fantastic i have a bunch more to talk about but let, let's talk about your questions first first from selma i'd like to know what your favorite gardening tools are oh my goodness we we could we could do a whole ask me anything just on tools um i of course i like the a hand trowel um i like i like the hand tools from dewitt their quality that they're they're made over in, in the netherlands um but their quality high high grade steel they stay sharp and they have a bunch of di of different varieties but but i i like a hand trowel i also like one, one of these garden knives. We, we see people talk about garden knives all the time, but I, I like the ones that are called Hori Horis. And it just kind of adds a little bit of an exotic twist to a real basic tool. But, but a garden knife has a sharp edge on it, has a serrated edge. It may have measurements on it so you can tell how dig you're, how, how dig you're deeping, how deep you're digging. Um, other tools I like, um, as far as for weeding type of tools, I like the cobra head, and I'll have I'll have to um, start showing some pictures. Set bring bringing some of these in so we can take a look at these. I also like to um, like in planting. I like to get the power tools out, and and using augers to dig holes for either annuals or for 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 the vegetables, and I used a um, bulb auger for years. Then I became acquainted with the, um, the max bit. Sorry about that. Max bit is a, is a auger type tool. You can look at it, go to the maxbit.com. You can kind of, kind of see, a uh, an example of that, but that's a tool that's made right here in Mississippi. So I, I like to use local products like that. So anyways, that's just kind of touching on the types of tools I, I, I like to have. And of course, shovels and spades, you know, rakes and, and all that stuff. So thanks for that question. And let, let's go on. Okay, so Jane Ann, where can I find the grow boxes you use? Oh my gosh, here's another, here's another topic that we can talk like for three days on. Um, Jane Ann's um, referring to the earth boxes. And I will be showing more videos, more um, daily dose videos on on earth boxes here this spring, how you plant them, how you how do you how do you um, switch between crops. But where you can find out more information is www.earthbox.com. They have all the information there. There's also access to the Earthbox forum, which is the Earthbox question and answer back and forth, giving tips and encouragement to each other. And I happen to be the global moderator for that um, chat. So you can address questions to me, but it's, it's a great place to get information. Earthbox.com is, is the place to go. Let's see, where are we at here now? Pat, hey, thank you. Um, thanks for joining us. Teresa Watkins, thanks for joining in this morning. And I'll be talking to you tomorrow morning. And I'll, I'll give I'll give everybody some more information on that. Now Mary's got a question: What ratio of pollinator plants to vegetables should you plant in your garden? I think there's no real percentage. I think plant as many as you want. Um, I, I think as, as a gardener, if you're if you're growing vegetables, you're also going, going to be growing flowering plants for for the aesthetics to make the garden look better i i just think as many as you're comfortable with um i tr i try to plant a lot of zinnias and marigolds and and th those easy annual types when, when i've got my vegetable garden going okay now vivian okay here's oh my gosh here's the question you know that everybody asks this time of year we've had some rain here in south mississippi and we're starting to see fire ant mounds pop up into the yard. Well, what you're going to want to do is for your for your general yard, you're going to want to use an area bait. And an area bait is a product that is granular. You spread it out, you water it in, 
And what, what happens, the worker ants that are out walk, running around take the bait back into the mound. Um, that, that's, the, that's the best way, I think. Don't use cornmeal. Don't, don't use any of these homemade, um, homemade recipes because they, ju they, just, they just don't work. Um, you can also treat mounds themselves. There's, there's individual mound treatments. When we get fire ants into the vegetable garden, that's when it gets a little bit dicey because of product labeling and what can we use in, in edible crops. Um, there is one organic that, is, that we can use that works very well as a mound treatment, and that's an insecticide called spinosad, S-P-I-N-O-S-A-D. Um, various trade names. I really like uh, Captain Jack's Dead Bug Brew, but you can mix this up. It's a liquid. You mix it up. I believe it's four tablespoons per gallon, and you can drench the fire ant mounds with that, and that is very effective at eliminating those mounds that you get in the vegetable garden, and it's safe to use with our edible crops. So I hope, I hope that helps. If you want more information on fire ant control, you can always send me an email to southerngardening at msstate.edu, and I'll, I'll get that information, or I'll have Ellen give Ellen some more work here, uh, some information to, to send out on that. And, there, and then there she is. She is on the ball this morning. Thank you. Okay, so where are we got here? Judy, how are you doing this morning? Are there any homemade concoctions good for our vegetables? Example, the water... For example, the water eggs that have been boiled in or the water, the eggshells and banana peels have been Epsom salts, coffee grounds. Okay. Banana peels, coffee grounds are, are great. Put them in the compost pile and then use, the, use, that, use that compost out in the garden. You know, some of these homemade, um, um, oh my gosh, these, these homemade solutions, let's say you know, soaking, um, you know, eggshell soaking banana peels, they sound really great, okay? And they make, make you feel better, but they, they, they don't work. Um, they're, they're, you can't pull enough calcium out of eggshells or potassium out of banana peels to make, a, to make a difference. That's better off into the compost pile and then use it once it's composted. Um, but if you have any more questions on that, send, send them, send them to me and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll, I'll actually get you the research that shows that, that the, that these things don't work. Okay. Let's see here. Thanks for reposting. Couldn't find where to connect. Okay. Please discuss how to rehab aloe that has been cold damaged. My big, beautiful plant is limp with brown tips and worried. Okay, I've, obviously you you left you left your aloe out and it got nipped, right? What what I would do is we're, we're getting into the the warmer weather now. I I'd get it back outside on warmer days, not in direct sun, and I think I would go ahead and start the 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 real mushy. I'm assuming you have some mushy mushy leaves on it. I would go ahead and start removing that because the weather's getting warmer and it's going to start growing, but remove the mushy parts back to where you see you have more healthy tissue and then be patient. You know, this, it's not going to be an overnight fix, but, but I, th I think if, I think right now you can go ahead, clean it up and you'll, you'll, you'll be okay a month or two down the road. Like I say, but just be patient. Don't, don't, don't panic over it. Um, you know, and you know, you know, Laura. On the other hand, if you just, you know, just want to be, you know, be on the safe side, go out and get yourself an, another one right now. Maybe that'll give some encouragement to the the not so good looking plant to, that it has to step its game up. So, anyways, that's just maybe maybe an idea that might work. And Tammy, good morning. Uh, oh, and Laura, Laura, back. I forgot to add. It's in a container. I put it out in the patio too soon. Yep, we're. I think just follow that advice that I gave you. And I, th I think you'll think you'll be okay, man. That was rapid fire there for the first batch of questions for the morning. So let, let's go ahead and look at some of the, um, some of the, the topics I've got written down here. Um, I'm, I'm surprised that I didn't get a question this morning about using, you know, pre-emerge herbicides out on our lawn. Uh, we're, we're getting into April. 
this is kind of traditionally probably the last time I would recommend using a pre-emerge out on your lawn because we still have some of those warm season grasses or warm season weeds that are still going to be germinating now. Well, if you haven't <clears throat> put the pre-emerge out already, you've missed some, but it's okay. You can get some of these later germinating and that'll take some pressure off your lawn. There's some good products out there, granular. I really like the granular products and um, we they're easy and I, and I think they're pretty effective. I wouldn't use any of the weed and feed products right now. Well, actually ever. I think if you're going to feed the lawn, go ahead and use a good quality fertilizer. I like Turf Builder myself. Um, and if you're going to take care of your weeds, take care of your weeds as separate steps. I think you'll be much, much happier with the results on, some, on something like that. Um, other, other things I've got, um, seed starting. You know, I, I had some questions this week, email, um, some folks had forgotten to start their tomatoes. Is, is it too late? Do I have to go out and buy transplants from the garden center? Oh, no, it's, it's not, not too late at all. Here in South Mississippi, here in zone 9A, we're going to have tomato season really from April 1st through the summer all the way into the fall until we get frost in the fall. So totally okay to go ahead and start tomatoes. Don't start them outside. I, I'd, I'd, start them, I'd start them inside initially in small cups. And then as, as they get bigger, it'll, you know, you're going to be about six weeks in, in the small cup. But after the seedlings germinate and are up, I like to get them outside this time of year as quick as I can. They'll grow much better and much stronger getting that um, real sunlight rather than underneath what we think is a bright um, fluorescent light. Can, can, there, there's, you cannot beat Mother Nature and the sun for growing seedlings. So that, that's, that's what I would do. Don't, don't worry. Don't worry about that. And in fact, you know, I, I mentioned when I started that, um, you know, I, I just sowed pepper seeds last night because I'm going to plant in May. I'm also going to sow, and if you like, um, if you like eggplants, let's see here. Here's one from Renee's, this um, Italian trio blend. Haven't, haven't sown those yet. I like to do eggplants a, lo a little bit um, when it's hotter. And then an heirloom Asian mix, some of the long, the long thin peppers. The, we really like um, eggplants out on the grill. Um, really any kind of eggplant on the grill is pretty darn good. But I'm going to be sowing these this weekend. And, you know, it's going to be a mid-May mid when I finally get these out into the garden. Um, you know, I'm not concerned. I'm going to, I'm going to be, um, I'm going to be late with them at all. Um, I only compete trying to get the first tomatoes harvested in the neighborhood. That that's the only time I compete with the, with the, um, with the vegetables. If you haven't, you know, I got a question this week about pruning roses. You know, ideally, you know, we, we should have pruned our roses in mid um, February. Um, if you watched our daily doses that we did a uh, couple of weeks ago, my daughter and her husband were visiting us, and I just got around to pruning roses beginning of March. You know, they'd already started to grow, but, you know, they hadn't been pruned and they needed to be pruned. Same kind of advice. Ideally, is this, not, is this the best time? No. But, but if you haven't gotten to it, Now's a perfect time in this weekend to be a perfect weekend to go out there and prune those roses back, you know, and prune anything else that, that really needs to be cleaned up before all the um, spring and summer growth gets going. So it's my thoughts on it. It's really never too late to prune. There's always optimal times, but sometimes as life gets in the way, you only have a particular time to do the pruning, then then you then you do the pruning. I, I I've never failed in, in that you know in that aspect to, to prune wrongly or or you know nothing's died pruning it out out of out of season for me. Let's just do it that way. And then as far as vegetables um, growing, you know we we've got you know everybody wants to do tomatoes, warm season crop. 
I always recommend, you know, going by the last frost date. And the last frost date um, information can be a little misleading. I like to go with the 90% chance of no frost. So what does that mean? That means April 2nd here on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. It means, you know, we get up into the Jackson area. That's probably April 9th or 10th, about a week. Then we get up into northern Mississippi. You know, we're looking at, you know, April 15th, 16th, 17th, before we pretty sure we're not going to get the frost. Now, even doing it that way, I remember several years ago, planted on April 2nd. Well, April 14th and 15th, we had 35 degrees come in for a couple nights. And I had to scramble to try to cover up 36 earth boxes full of tomatoes. I planted on the right date, but, you know, Mother Nature sometimes has, has other plans for us, you know. So we always, I always say go by the 90% frost date. But when we look at it, you know, the 50% the chance of frost date here on the Gulf Coast is March 17th. So really, I could have planted on St. Patrick's Day and then run into two um, series of, of cold weather events that we've had since then. So we always try to always try to get the planting right. You know, who wants to plant too early and then have to replant besides the garden centers that are going to sell you more plants? So they're, they're, no, but they're never going to argue about that. But I'll always tell you the plant at the 90% um, frost date. Okay, so let's see here. Where are we at? Do we have any other new questions? Yes, we do. Let's see. There's our extension webpage. Hey, Lacey, how you doing? I'm glad that you've joined in. I've started my first garden, herbs and veggies, and I'm soaking in all the information I can take. Well, you know, congratulations for jumping into our obsession with the garden. It, it, is, it is habit forming, one of the good habits to have. Uh, one thing I will say is don't start too big. I, I don't know how big your garden is with your herbs and veggies, but I, I always like to recommend start small. It's easier to take care of. And then, then if you're successful with that small garden, then, then you can go ahead and start ramping up the size of the garden. But I talk to a lot of new gardeners that get all charged up and they go out and they, and they plant a, you know, a thousand square foot garden. And then it gets to June and July here in South Mississippi. And it's just too stinking hot to go out and work in the garden. And if you don't keep up with the, with the chores in the garden after a week or two, it's a lost cause. And you might as well just pack it in and start over again next year. So start small, be successful. And I know, know that you'll have a great season. If you need any questions, you can always email me at southerngardening at msstate.edu. And I, I can answer those questions. And let's see here. And Ellen has posted a um, rose pruning video that we did from several years ago that actually turned out. I thought it was, was, a, was a pretty good event. Um, let's see here. Any success with wall of water plant protectors? Yeah, Judy, the wall of water actually do, they do work pretty good of providing some protection from cold because they work by the, the water is a, is a, well, it's, it's a great temperature buffer. And as you get, as you get cold weather coming in, the outside of those walls of water get cold and they're releasing heat and that helps to keep the plant warm. They're not a long-term solution. They're, they're like an overnight, you know, dip into the upper 30s, maybe kind of, kind of situation. You know, they're definitely not going to work below 32 degrees. So if that's going to happen, you got to figure out something else. But wall of water can, can be effective. Okay, now Lynn is asking, is it too late for lettuce, Brussels sprouts, and cabbage? Uh, Lynn, I would say right now, yes you know, from seed. If you want to go ahead and get some cabbage as transplants, I saw cabbage transplants at the garden center last week. I've been in a couple of garden centers over the last couple of weeks and they have been slammed. Everybody's out gardening, but I did see cabbage transplants. So you can go ahead and try and get kind of a, kind of a late season um, harvest in. Brussels sprouts, 
Um, probably wait till fall to go ahead and, and do those. I, I just don't think you have enough time for that. And the same for lettuce. Lettuce from, from a transplant stage, you know, you get a transplant, you're two or three weeks before you get some, you know, get some size and get some small heads, be kind of fun to do. If you want to go from seed, what you could do is get packs of like, like the baby lettuce, sprinkle that into a top of a container, and then grow that as kind of that, that fancy baby lettuce. You can get that done in about, you know, about 28 days from sowing to harvest. So that might be something, something to try. Um, but, but I, I wouldn't think you're going to get, you know, big heads of lettuce now. It's, it's just a little late. It's going to start getting a little too warm and it's just not going to be lettuce weather. Unless, now here, now I will tell you this, unless you want to grow them inside under lights, I'm growing some, some of these little baby, um, romaine mini heads under lights on my light rack and I'm going to see if I can keep some lettuce growing all year long here inside the house and see how that works. I'll, I'll report on that and see how that turns out. But I've been doing that since first of the year, and we've been enjoying lettuce grown under lights in our um, in our dining room, you know, for a couple months now. So it might might be some, might be something to try. Yeah, let's see here. What do we got here? Lacey, ha okay, we've got. Two um, six foot by four foot raised beds, small, so I can make sure I'm able to keep it keep it correctly. By fall, more comfortable. My husband build two more as I can use as well. That that's a that's a great way to great way to grow raised beds. You easier on the back. You can get some great gardens um, um, a raised bed mix, or if you want to get really crazy with a good container mix, that's what I use in mine. And as long as you don't walk in it, it'll be a great, um, great place to grow your vegetables. So good luck with that. You know, and send us some pictures. You know, if anybody wants to send me pictures of, of their garden and how they're doing, you can always post them to the Southern Gardening um, Facebook page, or you can send them to me at that, you know what that email address is, southerngardening at msstate.edu, and I'll go ahead and share them that way too. So that would be always fun because I like, you know, I like to share the pictures in my garden. So let's, what else we got here? So March, fire ants in my yard are frustrating my dogs graze and, and the, and the killer is a no, no. Um, is there an organic? Yeah. And we go back to March, that, um, that product called spinosad, you can get, it comes at most Folks use it as a liquid, but you can get it. There is spinosad as a granular that you can put out, and that is an organic that that shouldn't shouldn't you know harm your dogs. I ch I check it out. Um, I'm going to make a note and and take a look at that myself. But I don't I don't think there's a problem with that using that. Okay, so Joe DeSoto County here, way up north in Mississippi. I've planted cabbage seedlings and they got flooded with the last rainstorm, but evidently don't mind all that water as they're quite chipper looking good. Well, broccoli seed will plant broccoli seedlings next, plus start lettuce, spinach, beet seeds. I'm thinking I should wait until fall to plant carrot seeds. Yeah, I, I think, Joe, you know, carrots are a better um, fall crop. Um, up in um, North Mississippi, yeah, you now you have a better chance of growing some of these plants from seed, the broccoli and the lettuces and can't tell you about spinach and beets. I have never been able to grow spinach and beets. I can grow a lot of things. Never, ever, ever have been successful with those. So good, good luck with that. And my hat's off to you. If you, if you can, if you're able to grow those, I think that's fantastic. Okay. So now Doug, I left some tomato seedlings outside in the high 30s. They look fine, but can there be issues with the plants that aren't visible to the eye? You know, Doug, I've done, I have done the same, you know, the exact same thing. And in fact, in some of my earth boxes out in the side yard, I was cleaning them out, um, you know, a week ago, I guess. And I've got volunteer tomatoes growing from last fall. And they have tolerated these cold temperatures that we've had the, the last the last couple um, cold snaps. Um, what what you'll see happen, yeah, physiologically, that cold temperature 
can set the plants back and they may, they may be slower to grow. Um, they may set flowers a little later, may fruit a little later. Um, but you know, to me, if they, if they're looking okay, I'd probably go ahead and keep going with them for a look for a little bit longer. Um, Tomatoes are actually a little tougher than we give them credit for, like, like a lot, lot of our plants that we tend to baby. Plant, plant, plants can, can be a little tough. Um, yeah, I, I, right now, I'd just be patient with them. You, you know, of, of course, if, you know, if you're uncomfortable because they've been exposed to that cold weather, you know, sure, go ahead and replace them if you want. Still lots of time. But there's also lots of time to be patient, too. So. We, we'll just we'll just leave it with that. And Lynn, hey, you're very welcome. And Becky, yeah, it's it's you know it, it's really time to get back into doing the live videos and um, you know start you know interacting with with the gardening public out there with Southern Gardening Nation. Now, Becky, now can I get an autographed copy of your new book? Well, I think that's a great segue to, to talk to talk about. The, the Southern Gardening book. Um, Southern Gardening book. Oh, here Paula Pettis is trying to call me right now. Um, I'll, I'll, gi I'll give I'll give her a call in a little bit. I'm going to be at Island Garden Shop tomorrow. But anyway, Southern Gardening all year long. Just published last. We've got them all last month, and I, I think that this is just a a, gorge, a gorgeous book. It 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 just it, well, it, it's very hard for me to see what see what I'm showing you. You're just gonna have to take my okay, never mind. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. It is it is gorgeous. Now, how can how can I get an autographed copy of it? Um, yeah, that's easy. Send me a email to southerngardening at msstate.edu and we'll we'll work out the details for that. But yeah, very very easy to do to, to get that to you. Um, and I think Ellen has put up the the, the, the crazy long link to the uh, to, to to Amazon, or you can get it at the um, University Press of Mississippi is the um, I, I think is the preferred way, but but Am Amazon is pretty easy, right? But so southerngardening.com, um, it's we've got it in uh, some of the garden centers here down south. Um, we're going to be doing book signings. We have been doing book signings the last couple weeks. Um, and tomorrow I am going to be at um, Island Garden Shop in Gulfport um, doing a kind of what's new, what's hot, how are we going to grow it tomorrow? Um, kind of a kind of a wandering talk through the through the garden center. I'm also going to be signing books there. Um, that's going to be from nine o'clock. Got, I've got to look at this nine, nine o'clock to noon and. You know, I like to I like to give away things on these, um, you know, pro door prizes on these. Um, ask me anything for Southern Gardening. So tomorrow we're going to do this a little different. And, and I'm sorry that this is kind of Gulf Coast centric, but the first person that can tell me what the secret word is today will get a prize. I'll, I'll have a prize. But the first person to tell me the secret word. Yeah, I might as well. If you, if you don't know the secret word, you can't tell me, right? But the secret word is heirloom. Okay. First person to tell, you know, to say, hey, listen to the Ask Me Anything yesterday, and the secret word is heirloom. It's going to get a prize from the Southern Gardening Prize Vault. So it'll, it'll, it will be a good one to get you going. Um, let's see here. We have any, any other questions going? No, we don't. So let, let me go ahead and promo an, another event that I'm doing tomorrow. Um, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Central Daylight Time, I'm going to be on the radio with my great friend, Teresa Watkins, on her show, Better Lawns and Gardens. That's um, out of Orlando, WFLA Orlando. You can catch that on iHeart is the easy, easiest way to do it. Um, I'll, post, I'll post links to that um, in, the, in the comments afterwards. But we're gonna we're gonna have a, a good good talk on a on an insect pest that you know that's just just creates havoc in places. We're gonna talk about ambrosia beetles and what what can what can we do? What kind of plants do they affect? 
what are the telltale signs that you've got ambrosia beetles in, in your in your landscape? So we, we will do that. That's WFLA, FLA Orlando on iHeart, Better Lawns and Gardens with Teresa Watkins. It will be fun. Okay, so now we've got one, one last question here. What are your picks to plant in heavy, heavily shaded areas under trees? Either grass or other plants or ground covers. Well, if, if you've got, if Laura, if you've got an area under a tree that's in heavy shade, then you're not going to be successful with grass. Let, let's, let's, just, let's just be honest with that. Even though some of our grasses will, will say that they're shade tolerant, yeah, they're shade, they're better tolerant of shade than any of some of our other warm season grasses, but none of our warm season grasses like to grow in shade. So that's that that's just one thing to right up right off the bat. Um I I like to recommend, you know, we can go with ground covers, we can go with mulched areas. Um there the, if you like the grassy look, there's um you know, grassy ground covers like liriope, um, mondo grass can give you kind of that grassy look, but will will tolerate that shade. Um, and really, one of the things that you should do is go to your local independent garden center and see what they've got and tell them what you, what you want and let them make suggestions of plants they have that are available or plants that they can source for you. Um, that's one of the advantages about um, dealing with, with your local garden centers rather than the big boxes, because most of the time they, they have sources where they can find plants for you where the big boxes that they just, they just don't do that. So, okay. So Joe is going to wait to plant carrots in the fall. Another tool question from Selma. What are my preferred hand clippers? Well, there, there's a there's a cut there's a couple of them and I wish I wish I had them sitting here with me at the desk. I'm I'm just going to have to keep like a box of box of things here when we do these. But I like bypass pruners, more like the scissor cuts. Um, Felco's are a good brand. Um, Corona are a good brand, and even Dram the um, the watering people with the hoses and the watering wands and such. They have some really small clippers that work um, bypass that work really really well. So that th those are my picks for for um, clippers or pruners are, are always bypass. Don't don't look like the anvil type because they they just crush stems and the plants don't recover as quickly as. Oops, here and and my 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 sidekick Katie she just came in dug up all of my pruners so here's my um here's my um pair of corona bypass i like work work really well and what i like about these is you can replace the blades you can also get a blade sharpener so you can you can sharpen these as as you use me and keep them keep them really sharp and then the the other little set i was talking about were, were the, the little dram clippers you know let's just kind of let's just kind of put these side by side so you so you can kind so you can kind of see the size difference let's see here uh, so, so you see the, these these drams a little bit smaller you know really easy to stick in your back pocket and and have a handy um set of clippers for for small things and you know, small soft herbace for herbaceous type um prunings yes yeah, southern gardening ellen you have that right katie is the best you know I, obviously she was paying attention and watching watching this so she was helping out with that so we we appreciate that katie as always um so with that you know we've been going for 40 minutes here i i don't i don't want to overdo it with this being our first ask me anything for the year so I'm going to say, if anybody's got any other questions, go ahead, email them to me. Put a, put them in the chat here for the um, for the Ask Me Live, and we and we can go ahead and answer those. Remember those coming out to the Island Garden Shop tomorrow in Gulfport. First one that tells me the secret word, what was it? Heirloom. It's going to get a fantastic prize from the prize vault that of 
things that things that I collect. And Laura, yes, you're very, you're very welcome. Happy gardening to you. Happy gardening to everybody out in Southern Gardening Nation. And let's go out and have a great weekend and get some gardening done. And hey, we'll see you next time. Oh, be sure to watch our daily doses that Katie and I produce here gardening in the yard. So we'll see you then. Thanks for joining us, guys.